Hi all, so we're out here in the shop again uh, and I decided on my pickup to go ahead and tear the motor out of it because it was leaking oil so bad and then when I got into it I found some problems so why not just go ahead and rebuild the whole thing right so uh, so we've got I've gone through a whole bunch of steps already but uh, ran into some problems and learned some new things and I thought hey I'll make a video about that in case anybody else is wondering as well how to put these together once you have them apart so let's go through okay so what I've been doing here just recently is I've got all of these apart so all of the pistons and I've got the connecting rods off of them uh, and I pressed out the wrist pin in there as you can see this one's freshly out it's not even prepped uh, and now I'm getting ready to put them back together. So I've got the pistons measured uh, and measured my bushing uh, and ready to put it back together with new bearings and all of that jazz. So uh, now we're putting it back together and we've got our main pieces and our piston. The rings are already off of it, but we've got our piston. We've got our connecting rod uh, with our bushing in there that measures out just fine. We've got our wrist pin that connects the whole thing together and then we've got our keepers um, here on that hold the wrist pin from sliding out either end. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go through right now and get everything prepped. Right. So you want everything nice and clean when we go in. And you can see here we've got some uh, oil staining and just all sorts of dirt that's given us a film on there, and it's a very very tight fit. So. Uh, while we've got the part, we might as well just clean it up. So I'm going to go over to the buffing wheel, put some compound on it, and get all of this nastiness off. Okay, so now we're here uh, at the buffing wheel. Now you can kind of do this by hand uh, and, you know, do it with a drill with little attachments or a Dremel or whatever you want to do. Uh, but I found this is just the easiest and the quickest way to do it, especially if you've already got one. So. Uh, drop by um, a lot of tool places will have this but this one specifically is just from Harbor Freight and it's just a cheap buffing wheel and it's just uh, just a whole bunch of little fiber discs put together right <clears throat> and then got some kind of compound uh, I don't know if I'd recommend this from Harbor Freight not super great but it works for now and uh, honestly I don't use it that much so it's just fine. So how you do this uh, and how you prep the pad, and I, and I know this one's a little dirty. I should probably clean my parts a little bit better next time. But anyways, um, is you turn it on and if you you know, tear the cardboard off and just kind of sit it on and rub it over the wheel while it's running to kind of load the pad. And then once the pad's loaded and you can see some of that green on the pad, you take this away and then you just start buffing away until you get a mirror finish and everything all of this oil staining has gone uh, and all this baked on goodies are not there anymore and then we can start putting things together okay now our wrist pins all nice and buffed out all that oil staining uh, all that baked on goodies <coughs> Are gone now the next step is I like to uh, on the inside of here where the wrist pin slides in a lot of that baked on oil uh, and things like that are in there as well uh, so I know it's probably tough to see but you see all those discolorations in there it's just adding a film and just has no usable place in there at the moment all right so I've tried going through there with a couple different things. So using like some polish compound and stuff like this. This stuff works, but it takes forever. So what I found is, <clears throat> and just lightly, we're not looking to take off any sizable material, but just get that kind of baked on oil film out of there. And this one's well used, um, but with uh, my Dremel, um, comes with these little buffing pads with these little screws that go through the middle uh, and they match up really nicely with the opening uh, of these wrist pins and if you just take <clears throat> some of those and a little bit of this uh, just from when I used to paint cars 
some like Meguiar's or really any brand um, of polishing compound. And the medium cut just does a lot better. Right? It just cuts a lot better. And just put a little bit of that, and then you load the pad. And then just go in and out, in and out, in and out, work it around until all of that oil staining, all that baked on stuff is out of there. Okay, so we went through all those. As you can see, we got a nice, all that, or most of the oil film all up off there and got a nice clean surface to work from here. So tons better than what it was. Okay, and I don't know, I would advise don't go nuts on this step. I mean, this stuff here is still an abrasive, right? That's, that's why it does what it does, this is an abrasive. So going over and over and over uh, through there, it's probably... Uh, not so good. So the more you do it, the more your clearances are going going to open up, and you probably don't want that, right? Unless you uh, are specifically have a new bushing, and uh, you can allow for some of that uh, clearance to go in there. But still, unnecessary. You just need to get that oil film off. So now everything's clean, okay, ready to go back together. Make sure you wipe out all of that. Uh, grit that is in there from our um, polishing compound and then we're going to start assembling right so uh, I found assembly lube is just way too thick uh, to really do much of any good so I've got some clean 30 weight oil here and just give everything a good li little bit of rublication here so lubricate everything okay I'm going to set that aside so the oil doesn't end up catching dirt. And then we're going to get inside a little bit, a little bit, and a little bit more. So let's spread all of this out. So nothing goes in dry. Okay. Now, I like to test fit each piece, so then if there is a little bit of a problem and there's a burr on something that maybe I didn't see uh, coming out, then that can be addressed before, you know, the whole irritation of coming to it when you're actually putting things together. Now, your clearances should be really, really tight on these things, but... The part that I especially learned is getting these out, sometimes you have to tap them out with a hammer uh, so you can see the tool that I used here to actually get them out, right? You've got that all that oil film and all that buildup from uh, however many years it sat in the motor or <laughs> uh, inside the motor. So uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of persu persuasion to get it out, but Putting it back in, if everything's clean, you should not have to hammer on it. If you have to hammer on it, something's not clean, uh, or you're not in there straight, something like that. So these should be able to just go straight in. Uh, now, you kind of have to wobble it back and forth, just light pressure, and, ooh, and then you'll see it pop in. If it's cocked one way and you try to force it in, you're going to gouge uh, the inside of your piston uh, with your wrist pin. So this wrist pin's hardened. And this is soft cast iron or aluminum, whichever one you have. And it's going to gouge it uh, and it's going to leave a whole bunch of high marks. So then this is not going to fit properly. Uh, a lot of those metal shavings are going to come and then they're going to get inside of your bushing here for your connecting rod and nothing's going to work right. And this thing's spinning and pivoting back and forth inside the motor. It's going to cause some premature wear, right? So... Be very, very careful putting these in. If they do not, just slide together with slight pressure and then push in using your thumb, then something's wrong. You need to address it. Maybe you have a burr somewhere. I know on some of mine, whoever took it apart before, I found burrs on almost every single one where they had put this in and then didn't align it correctly and they smacked it with a hammer, which left a little lip down here uh, and it wouldn't go back together as nicely as I wanted to. So I had to get in, remove that burr from that lip, uh, and then proceed. So also specifically, now that we see everything's pre-fitted, everything's gonna go back together, a lot of these go back together a very specific way. So you can see on our connecting rod here, this is a 352, uh, Ford 352, 
and on each connecting rod it's got a dot only on one side so it's got a dot right here and then on the piston it's got a notch in one side of the skirt but not the other on the side Ooh, got out of camera okay now that dot according to Ford during those years goes opposite of this notch in the skirt so a lot of times look up your motor make sure you're putting these back together because there are some specifics now you're, you need to align these after you fit everything together okay and just light pressure again if it doesn't go in just with your hands then something needs to be taken out make sure that you're not doing any damage uh, and scarring up any of your bushings or your bearings anything like that okay now that slid through there just with pressure from my thumbs right so we can lean our connecting rod back dry my hands off a little bit okay and then we've got our little c-clips here now there's different kinds uh, that you can get down here. There's wire clips that can go on here. Uh, there's some of the spiral clips that are a real pain in the rear end to be able to put in. Luckily, these uh, are a lot easier. <laughs> so if you have these type, all you need okay, is your special C-clip pliers. And you put these in. The little plier ends. And then line it up with the hole squeeze your pliers together and make sure it's fully seated inside of that notch okay and these just allow the wrist pin <clears throat> to not come out the ends right so you don't want this to work out when the motor is running or else it's going to hit the side uh, of your cylinder bore so we'll put the other one in the other side here quickly Okay, that's fully seated. We got movement, nothing is binding, sliding back and forth just fine. And there we go. That's how you put it together. All right, so as we can see back here, still got two more to do for this particular motor, but hopefully this video uh, helped somebody and uh, got some usefulness out of it. So maybe just a couple tips and tricks. I know it's a bit of a, a beginner sort of thing, so those of you that are professional engine builders, feel free to comment, but not really meant for you necessarily. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you later.